how I wish I could be talking more about artificial intelligence, deep learning, but these are the top tech trends I've come up with that I think in 2022 we should adopt in Zimbabwe. If this is something you'd love to watch, stay tuned. Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandra and this is Beyond Techsolutely, a place for understanding tech and creating exciting narratives around it. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome and do not forget to share, like and subscribe. So on today's video, I'm going to be talking about top tech trends to watch out in 2022. This is only specifically for Zimbabwe. So I'll be talking about deep learning ai but i mean we're in zimbabwe we'll get there we'll get there the unpredictability of last year have made the task of predicting technology trends for 2022 audacious but hey we're going to try because here at beyond tech Solutely, that is what we want to talk about so jumping straight into it number one WhatsApp chatbot is an automated software powered by rules or artificial intelligence and runs on WhatsApp platform. People communicate with WhatsApp chatbot via the chat interface and like talking to a real person, it's a set of automated replies that simulates a human conversation on WhatsApp. So we have seen the rise of WhatsApp chatbots with banks and other companies, but uh, we would definitely find WhatsApp chatbot coming on probably from your Zimra, your payments, banks that have not jumped into this or any other businesses really. I think WhatsApp chatbot is going to be leading thing is smart home technology this is a term generally given to basic home amenities that have been fitted with communication technology enabling some degree of either automation or remote control these things uh, include appliances or when you're walking into your room then the fan automatically switches on home entertainment systems gates curtains you name it so as we are warming up to smart meters for zessa and for water we we'll actually also have uh, smart appliances like um smart geezers in our home so it's something that we are definitely looking into other one is machine learning machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that allow software applications to become more accurate at predicting outcomes without being explicitly programmed to do so machine learning algorithms use historical data as input to predict new output values so on machine learning in zimbabwe hopefully hopefully we will start having smart traffic lights the congestion is too much so probably smart traffic lights as well as smart cameras that uh, can also capture traffic offenders and probably toll gates if you can have express toll gates where you just buy your Zinara uh, smart card and then it just reads from your windscreen and then you'll be able to go there's no hassles long queues for your, your toll gates Okay, so the other thing has to be e-government. Uh, e-government is the use of technological communication devices such as computers and internet to provide public services to citizens and other persons in a country or region. So with e-government services in Zimbabwe, it has to be extended to probably applying for a birth certificate online 
or getting other public service or government services online people can uh, apply for a visa and your passport online but it has then to expand to other services probably your your license your your id imagine having a service where as soon as you turn 16 it then notifies you or you now need to to uh, have your id and then probably when you get 18 it then gives you a notification that you want you have to have your your driver's license connects you with every other information related to getting a license just the government services that they provide to its citizens okay so the other thing is the rise of on-demand services currently we do have on-demand services for food that's your food delivery services like dialect delivery and munch and also on demand services on taxi services like your fire but to then expand the on demand services to other services so say you want a tip from zimra or your tax clearance just to have uh, an on demand service rather than the normal application process that takes time so to have the normal products that we use in fintech be able to give us a breakdown of the charge for example most people use mobile money mobile wallets like eco cash uh, one money so to be able to have a feature that shows whether you have enough money to be able to make this payment or the amount that you have been charged without knowing how much of the charges are there for example uh, if i want to purchase something using EcoCash unless I have a lots and lots of money. I have to check my balance first and then do mental work. But uh, to have those uh, systems or add-ons add or widgets on these um, mobile money wallets so that you can be able to calculate if you are able to do this uh, transaction or not. It has to be clear and known to the customer. So hopefully that can be something interesting. We can watch out for 2022. Okay, so if you're in Zimbabwe, you definitely know that every Tuesday there's an auction for foreign currency uh, via the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. And this application is done uh, via your bank and it's manual. So we'd want to have an automated uh, auction that probably businesses will want allocation for the foreign currency. Apply before Tuesday and then you can see your application status on a portal then you see your allocation where you can pick your foreign currency rather than to do it manually at the bank. Another application that I think we should have in 2022 is an accident information platform. I don't know what we're going to call it, but say you have an accident. Uh, then you can easily form the police. The police would be notified, come exactly where you are or where the accident spot or scene is. They pinpoint, they use geolocation, obviously. The police will write the report. It will be shared with the various insurance companies that the, the, the accident people would actually have and then be notified. Okay, so join with me is uh, someone who once had an accident this year. How was your experience uh, when you had to file everything manually? The experience was, uh, yeah, it was quite hectic mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would want to relive that uh, okay. again. Yeah, uh, you need to mark the, like the accident uh, place, then one of the cars they should go and pick up the police from wherever they are. These things, they would uh, just uh, have to look uh, at what happened, uh, write a lot of reports, uh, they ask you to also, like all the parties involved, to also uh, make a note about what happened. Uh, mm -hmm. So all that was being done manually, and uh, you know how it is uh, possibly just the next day that you wait somewhere, yeah, and you are in shock. Yeah. You, all, you now have to go through all that. So the paperwork is the police. Then how then do you take your paperwork to the insurance for claims? Is it also manual? It's automated yes it is very very manual yeah, because <laughs> you you have to go to 
you have to go to your insurance company, right? Uh -huh. They'll give you a lot of uh, documents to complete, and once you've completed those documents, you have to take them to the police uh -huh. for uh, filling in as well and stamping. And once all that has been done, then you have to take the documents back to the insurance again, uh -huh. and the insurance will start processing. So you can imagine the amount of time that uh, goes into that process. Yeah. So that whole process is uh, quite involving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because maybe you get to the police and you hear that the investigating officer dealing with your case is not in there. Oh. You have to wait, wait for, for them. them. Especially nowadays when uh, everything needs has to be digital. You see now. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I think we need an accident uh, platform for Zimbabwe because the process is definitely, definitely very, very manual. <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to be the first, uh, first client to use that app or at least mm -hmm. to, uh, to promote it. Yeah, because it's very, very long, but really it's uh, uh, very necessary starting this day and age. Okay, I think in the next video, we're going to explore different use cases that can come up with your platform and other platforms we have uh, spoken about with the top tech trends. But I hope you like the top tech trends we hope and we as Zimbabwean would want to see coming in. Technology has sustained us throughout the pandemic and now it continues to redefine how we work, live and interact. These are the top tech trends I've come up with that I think in 2020, 22 we should adopt in zimbabwe if you agree or disagree do let me know in the comment section below if you have any other uh, tech trend that you think we should adopt in 2022 as zimbabwe do also let me know by commenting down below. thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye